Hi, I'm the Grow Boss, and this is Cannabis Hotline. This is a show where we can talk about anything about cannabis that you have questions about. Before we go to this call, though, I just want to point out that this guy was willing to listen to what I had to say. He was willing to process it. There was no preconceived what I read on the internet. He didn't need to argue or defend his point. And as the pictures develop and as the call develops, you'll see. This is a pretty typical call for me. And it ends literally like at the 59 minute mark. Why? Because when the call goes smooth, it takes me about an hour to get the information out. So let's listen. Hi, I'm the grow boss, and I'm on the phone with a caller who has some questions about their growth. So what is it that I can do for you today, sir? Um, I have been a hobby grower for a little while. I've got a few grows under my belt, and it's a very steep learning curve, I have to say. I came across your stuff on the internet, and um, I thought, oh my God, I just need some advice on what to do, what I've been doing wrong. I'm looking to take it up to the next level, so I've got um, some buildings which are available to me, which I'm looking to use. They are basically split into three rooms, about 2.5, well, I'll convert this into feet for you, about 10 feet wide, and 16 feet. 18 feet long, each each of those three rooms. This is a concrete structure. I'm looking to have a sealed room or sealed grow space. So I can basically aim to have product coming out every month. Okay, those are good objectives. So you have three 10 by 18 rooms. Yeah, I sent you um, a plan of this a while ago. I can send that again if you want to see it. Yeah, send it over so right. I can look at it with you. But for the most part, I think I'm already on track. I mean, we know you're going to have a three-light rotation. Yeah. You know what a three-light rotation is from watching my videos just by the way you described your rooms. And while I appreciate you converting meters into feet for me, <laughs> That's funny. I, I could see why you would do it, American. <laughs> okay, so you have you have ten by eighteen. So if we divide, I mean, just the first round of math is if we divide that. In Can I just check those measurements before we go on? Because um, tell me the like, meters. Just tell me right. the meters. They are five point six meters long each room. Uh, now, the three rooms are slightly larger. They start at 2.1 meters wide, going up to 2.6 meters wide. Okay, that's closer to, two meters is closer to six feet. So you have six by 16. That's the smallest ones, yeah. Okay. All right, and then the biggest ones get a little bigger. Okay. All right. And you said that they're inside of a building. So I can consider this three rooms inside of like, a building. Yeah, it's like a concrete bunker, this. Okay, um, but three separate, right? Three separate. Okay. All, the room heights are just over eight feet as well. Okay. Which so obviously you, determines the types of grow. Ask me, say that again? Which obviously means I can't do large plants in there. You know, it's interesting. I can hear it that you're already starting to put the parts and pieces together just based on your language, in a new way, I suspect, than you have been for oh, those totally. first few grows. Yes. Totally. So, <laughs> so what I hear is 5 by 15 with a little bit of walk walk around room. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, it's 6 by 16 and a half. You say they get a little bigger. But we have to take the lowest common denominator because when we do a three-light rotation, everything kind of has to be the same. Okay. In this three-light rotation, I would suggest that your bedroom be the biggest of the three. Really? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because you're going to grow them as big as possible in the bedroom. And remember, if you put, let's say you have 10 plants in each room. Yeah. If you have 10 plants in each flower, then you're going to have 20 plants in veg. 
because 10 plants are going to go into flower A, and in a month, 10 plants are going to go into flower B, and in a month, 10 plants are going to go in A again. So you always have two times plants in bed. So do you have any type of plant count restriction? No. Okay. So no plant count restriction. Perfect. Um, are you, are you able to just purchase cuttings wherever you live? Is it legal enough that you can just go purchase? Okay. So you're going to have to do a veg. Okay. So based on size, you're going to have three 1000 lights in each room. That's the best way for you to take over the world. If it's five by 15, (laughs) if it's five by 15, you can put three five-by-five five spaces in there. That gives you 3,000 watts in each space, and you might have 4,000 in veg later when you're good, which is why I want veg has twice the plants. It needs to have at least the same amount of light. So you're into this for nine 1,000 lights to start. Right, so you go for three 1,000. Okay, interesting, yeah. Well, if you're going to... Listen, when you have a small space and I put something on a light mover, a light mover is fun. It gets you 25% more for seven watts worth of electricity. But if you double the light, you double the yield. So instead of getting one and a half pounds or two with a light mover, you would get three pounds. Okay. Um. We have not got to the heat question yet, but then the, what would happen would be the next question would be heat because you can put two pounds, sorry, you can put 2,000 watts on a light mover instead of 3,000 watts and reduce the heat by 33%. Now, I, I generally when you guys ask with rooms of this size and lights of that size, I, I don't suggest two on a light mover. I suggest three because you're going to have to buy an air conditioner no matter what. And you're probably going to have to have an electrical wire brought in with 50 amps no matter what. And so as long as you're going to have to deal with the heat, you know, with three rooms with 3,000 watts, you could buy a three-way split like one of those 30,000, 40,000 BTUs. Each room would have its own thermostat. And now you're only cooling what you really need to in the most effective way possible. And once you do that, because you said sealed, and sealed was a bad word. Sealed changes everything. Once you do that, you can add CO2. So technically you would go from three lights to almost four lights. So you would be at four and a half pounds with three lights to... So when you say I'd be going from three to four, you'd have... You'd suggest three 1,000 watts on a light mover, effectively making four lights. No, sir. It would be 2,000 on a light mover approaching right. three. It would be 3,000 with CO2 approaching four. Okay. Right. Okay. See, if, you, if, if the heat was a problem, you would do two on a light rail, and you would still add. But you said sealed. So two on a light rail is closer to 2,500 watts. But, man, you said sealed. So you might as well put three in there because the air conditioner that you would require for two on a light mover, would it, it's a little bit different. Two on a light mover is different than three. Um, you know in my videos how I show you those, those little roller ACs with the two ducks in the back? Um, I'm not sure if I've seen that one. Portable. Portable AC, the kind you put on the ground, you can wheel in and out of a room. They had right. one and two ducks out of the back. With two lights, with 2,000 watts, one of those little ACs will work. Okay. But that means you would have to buy an AC for each room. Now, those ACs are about $500 each, and they're 1,400 watts worth of electricity each. So it took... Fifteen hundred dollars, and well, four thousand watts worth of electricity. You could probably spend three thousand dollars, and you would get a triple split unit that would be outside 
And it might cost twice as much to buy the equipment, but the electricity that runs it will be half the cost. And it will be far more. Each room will have its own thermostat. You'd get that with the smaller AC. But in this case, if you have the if you have the split unit, you can easily and comfortably and without taking up any floor space cool the whole room beyond capacity. You can buy an AC that's so nice for so little money that you could have the veg and both flowers, all of them on at the same time, and be able to easily cool it. Now, the reason that I've taken so much time talking about the cooling is because the last thing you need is to do the cooling twice. Because if you spend 1500 for those crappy little things, and by crappy I mean inappropriate for you, they do work for the little home grower. If you spend your money buying the crappy little thing and you have to do it twice, that sucks. Right, okay. I've got right. you, yeah. And, yeah, I'll especially when... What? I'll, I'll go hungry if that's the case, yeah. Right. So, for you, you're going to divide, you've got the three rooms, you get a split AC, and now you have half the electricity because you bought the right equipment. Frankly, I'm looking, I mean, you're what? Under $10,000 if you need fan filters for every room, too, I mean, you're still under. And that's with pots and meters and everything else. A $4,000 AC, $2,000 in lights, you're at $6,000 installed. Um, you're going to need the electrical, $1,000, $7,000. Buckets, soil, all that stuff. You could even do hydro and still come in under $10,000. And... Really, the only thing that would change if you bought those cheaper ACs would be like 1500 bucks because you're still going to need an electrician. So now when you add CO2, you have the right AC, you have the right power, you have the right relationship between veg and flour, and the CO2 can pay for the air conditioner. Right, okay. I want to go back one step and ask you a okay. question about Considering this is a sealed grow, do I need to insulate the concrete walls? Is that going to help or hinder the heat issues, in your opinion? Well, the concrete is a heat sink, so yeah. it, it would cool the room all day long. And if you ran the AC at night because you wanted your buds to get purple or cold at night, um, the concrete would absorb the cold all night long. So you would have a heat sink out of the concrete, um, not a creator. Unless, of course, you have a west-facing wall and you're blazing on the sun. If you have a hot wall, I would consider um, insulating it, not mylar, insulate. Like just some, yeah. you know, just some home insulate if one wall is hot. But in that case, I would definitely thermo-inspect the walls. Just a little $10 thermal gun off eBay. Um, and you can digitally check the temperature of the wall. Of course, you could put your hand on it. You would just put your hand on it in the morning. You would put your hand on it in the afternoon and in the evening. During the summer, you would know. During the winter, you can always add the insulation later. But if you have enough cooling, you won't even care. Right, okay. That answers that question for me then. Thanks. Yep. Right, so um, because I, I'm limited in height, I assume here from stuff I've read from you before, you would suggest I go for something like a scrog. Yes, I, I don't see how you would have a choice because if you did a 10-week veg, your plants would be six feet tall with an eight-foot ceiling and a one-foot hood. Yeah, just you have any top. Right, it would just burn right into the top. I'm not into cooking this stuff. so um, right. Cook the heat always kills the smell first. You get good bud, but you get that hay smell because the scent glands on the leaves are next to the trichomes, and the scent glands are super delicate and the first thing to melt off. Okay, all right. Um, so if I'm coming down to things like lights, um, I'm assuming I'm just going to go high-pressure sodium on this because um, it just sounds the easiest thing. 
I've tried the well, LEDs before, and I'd. Oh yeah, yeah. You're not. You're gonna. You're just gonna do metal halide like Ushio grow bulbs in veg, and you'll do Ushio flower bulbs in flower. If you watch my Ushio videos, there's no bluer or more orange light that I found than those things, and you're really not buying that many. So. You know, you're going to end up with nine bulbs. The veg will last you a year and a half. The flower will last you six, eight, 12 months, depending on how good you are. And so you won't have very much expense in terms of the light bulbs. Okay. Uh, hoods, what are we talking about? Wide, supersized hoods? Okay. It's an interesting point right there because what we're going to talk about is the top of second and the bottom of third. Do you know how to shift? You know what a standard is, right? Manual. No, you you're talking above my head here. Start again. <laughs> oh, what about cars? You know, like shifting a car. Oh, right, you know yeah, what a manual yeah. transmission is, right? Yeah. Okay. When you rev a car to the top of second, you get more power. Like at 4,900 RPM, you're getting more power than if you shift into third at 3,500, you would get better mileage. Understand what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. In flower depending on the size and the shape and how you do it. For instance, you might find that you want a light mover with three lights. It, it may suit you. I, I don't know. You could hang three small hoods on light movers. But if you're not going to buy the light mover, you're going to want the bigger hood because you're going to run plants 5 by 15 long. You're not going to have a little walkway between the length. You might be able to walk all the way around, but the tables will be butted up against each other. You won't be able to get in between the plants. You'll only be able to reach over them. So you're going to have a patch that's 5 by 15 long. You might even have a patch 5 by 16. So in this case, you would get a wider hood, so you have a wider footprint, but less penetration. And if you look at that picture that I show you, that I emailed you, one of them was called three plants. This guy has three plants per 2,000 watts. And you can see his hood's five feet away, and he has a small hood. There are small hoods over these plants because just like a flashlight, you can turn it, you can focus it all the way so it goes very far or you can crank it over all the way so it goes very wide. But when it goes wide, it doesn't go far, and when it goes far, it doesn't go wide. And that's why when you look at the 15-plant picture, you can see he's got a wide hood. It's still five feet away, but he has a wide hood because he's growing in a wider area with less penetration. That's a big deal. So something you might consider is you might have big hoods in flower and smaller hoods in veg. You might do three no-glass hoods on a light mover in flower, small, you know, three small no-glass hoods in flower with three super-sized hoods in veg. Yes, there's some technique to that. Um, it, there's a small amount of room, of wiggle room, depending on what you decide to do on, like, when, once you commit. Because I, just with no light movers, I would suggest probably three supersized hoods and flower, and maybe you could do either way, supersized hoods or focused and veg. Um, just remember that veg has twice the plants that one of the flower gardens. There's as many plants in veg as there are in both flower gardens. Because at the end of, like, let's say the first, the first room is, is, comes down, you take, well, you're going to put 15 plants per two lights, so you're going to have 20 plants move into the flower room. You, you already have to have 20 plants in one-gallon pots that you're going to transplant into three-gallon pots, and they're going to stay in veg. And then you're going to have to take the cuttings that you took last month and put them in one gallon pots and put them under the plants that are all, that you just transplanted into threes. And the plants that you just put into flower, you're going to have to take cuttings from them. 
because you're on a four-week schedule. Every four weeks, you have to have 20 full-size plants. And by full-size, I mean full-size for you, not as big as possible. Yeah. So the, really the challenge for you comes in matching the cycle such that when the flower comes down, the veg is ready to be flowered. So you take 20 plants out of veg and you move them into flower. You And in a month, you're going to need 20 plants for the other flower room. So you better already have 20 plants in one gallon. And then in eight weeks, that first flower room is going to finish. So you better take your cuttings for 12 weeks because – you're going to take your cuttings for them because in eight weeks you're going to need more for that room. So you have a perpetual cycle with a three-light rotation that's pretty fast. And the thing is, if you want a four-week veg, you have to have a – you have to add like a four-week rooter. So you have to have eight weeks in veg for each flower room. But if you flower – if you need plants every four weeks, it makes it, a, you know, just a little complicated, easily doable once you understand, but you always have to remember that eight weeks when you start flower, you have to take the cuttings for that room too. They go back to veg, they sit in the rooter, then they get the ones, then they get the threes, then you move them into flower with, depending on how you do it, you might put them in a seven, a five, a seven, or a ten. But if you're going to keep them small with the 20 plants, you're probably going to go into a three or a five. So that veg is going to be tight, tight, tight. Oh, okay. you know, I probably said it wrong. I probably, you're going to take the cutting, then you'll put the cutting into a one gallon. You only have a four-week veg, sorry. You'll put the cutting into a one gallon then that one gallon will get transplanted into a three when you go into flower. The rotation stays the same. If you have to have, if you have a four-week veg and a four-week root, then eight weeks before the plants start flower, you need to take the cuttings. And because they're four weeks apart, every four weeks you're going to be taking cuttings, you're going to be transplanting the last four cuttings into one gallon, and you're going to be transplanting the one gallons now into three gallons into flour. And that happens every four weeks. So you're going to have 80 plants total, 40 in veg, 20 in each flower. Okay. Now, I pick these numbers that say four weeks root, four weeks veg. But that's an average because if you have a sativa, you might only have three weeks rooting which means you're only probably going to have three weeks in veg. So if you took your plants for a sativa, eight weeks, they're going to be too big. But you might have an indica. And if an indica grows slower, you might take your plants one week earlier and have a nine week instead of eight. Of course, if you're doing an indica and they don't grow as fast, Instead of 20 plants, you might have 25. Because if they grow slow, you have two choices. Either you veg them longer or you veg more plants. Okay. I'm going to be doing a hybrid, actually. Um, I've got a particular one that I like, and uh, there'll be some of okay. the two. Okay, so in this particular case, you see how I've given you the three-week example, the five-week example, and the four-week example. That's as close as I can get until you do this a couple of times. You're yeah. going to be the one that really nails it down, whether it be eight weeks or seven weeks or seven and a half or nine weeks. Sure. A lot of this needs ironing out in the building to see how it all, see how it all runs. No, it only requires ironing out in your strain because while you may have a chance, an option between two lights on a light mover or three lights, it has nothing to do with your rotation. That only changes yield and plant count. For instance, two lights on a light mover may not have the same plant quantity as three lights with no mover. So yield is based on light. 
your rotation is based on the strain. Your plant count will be based on your rotation. The longer the veg, the fewer you need. Okay. Okay. One idea I had um, was to have the flowering rooms coming on at different times. And if I'm having, as you might have suggested, um, large, wider air-cooled hoods, I could use one of the flower rooms to take the air from and also pump the heated air back in just to try and work out or just to eliminate the amount of heating and cooling going on. Is that well, something? Well, you said sealed. So yes. then you just said pumped air out. So well, you're going um, between to rooms. Pick... When I said no, sealed. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Right. And I'll tell you why. Um, you're just by the right air conditioner and there's no need for you to connect the rooms. Okay. Um, you might have a doorway between them to walk plants back and forth instead of walking out one room and in the other. But in terms of airflow, at your, at your game with three lights and CO2, you're approaching five, six pounds every month. Wow. Everything that you do is, well, with CO2, yeah, yeah, five, six pounds. With everything that you do, is geared toward the yield, not toward making things convenient. Okay. Because, I mean, if you're going to move the air around, you might as well spend the extra couple of hundred bucks and buy an AC where you don't have to move the air around. Uh, right, okay. I'm starting to get where you're going with all of this. Yeah. Yeah, each room so, is its own little planet, its own atmosphere. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, well, that simplifies things in a way for me because I was somewhat confused about the airflow and the air movement. Now, you are going to have to buy a CO2 monitor for each room. Um, I was thinking of getting the strain going first using the lights and adding the CO2 later. Yeah, but it's a sealed room. And there's only three things in the photosynthesis equation, light, water, and CO2. And CO2 is part of the conversion process. So you can have a vehicle and gas, but if you don't have a spark, you're not making power. So as soon as you CO2 run, from the beginning, right? CO2, if it's sealed, even veg has CO2. You don't need right. as much in veg. Veg, if you add CO2, so you will have to add CO2 to veg just to make 400 ppm that's in the air. If you want veg to go faster, you could add a little more CO2. But if the room is sealed, you're going to have to add CO2. In veg, you could put it on a timer, just like a 15-minute tab timer, 15 on, 15 off. You put it at 1 or 2 PSI. But in flower, you're going to want 1,500 the whole time. So you're going to buy one of those Sentinel controllers for flower that lets you program it so you can have maximum PPM. And at that point, you might as well buy a Sentinel controller for veg because you're going to have a lot of, you're going to be going through a lot of CO2. I mean, you're going to have 50 pound tanks unless you buy burners for your flower gardens. And that's a thing because in your case, a burner might be more effective because I suggest to people that that you start at a burner with 4,000 watts. But if you have the right AC and 3,000 watts and you can't go buy clones because, because it's not legal where you're at at the moment, then you might want a burner because switching out a propane tank is not the same thing as switching out six CO2 tanks. Yeah. Right. So in your case, with the right AC, I would suggest – two burners and flour, and a couple of tanks for veg. You might even do a burner and veg. It's not It's not that expensive. Okay. I'll be checking these prices afterwards. <laughs> yeah, they run – the burner, I think, is like 250 and the controller is like about 500 from Sentinel. You're, you really only need like the four burner. I don't think they have a two burner. 
you really only need a two burner. But if you buy the Sentinel four burner, you can tone down the burners so there aren't so all of them are not on. And yes, it does get hot, but frankly, you have a choice. You either vent and it sucks for the AC because you're sucking out the AC. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> or you vent just the hoods, and now you have the glass, and the glass gets hotter, so the room gets hotter. And unless you're sucking in cold air, and, and once you start venting, you lose the benefit of CO2. So if you yeah. buy the air conditioner, the CO2 pays for the air conditioner. But at six pounds per month, approaching six pounds per month, I would like to suggest that you are closer to being very committed than a novice <laughs> grower. Right. I always tell you guys, you know the difference between the pig and a chicken in a yeah, bacon and egg breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The chicken is involved. The pig is committed. And with three flower rooms and 9,000 watts, possibly 10 worth of lighting, and 2,500 worth of an AC, and a couple of burners, you, sir, are the pig in a bacon and egg breakfast. And once you're there, if you buy the right equipment, it makes it so much easier. And the probability of you being successful goes up asymptotically. I mean, if you buy the right equipment, the chance of you being successful is much higher than if you had spent, well, frankly, if you had bought 12 LEDs even at a 1000 bucks. I'm probably spending the same amount as you buying 12 LEDs because the real ones are not cheap. And the real ones really are better than those crappy little Mars ones that you see on eBay. So at this point... <laughs> I've tried them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I tried them. I'm not using them again. <laughs> right. Your experience backs what I know from thousands of growers. So in your case, if you were to buy 12 lights for three rooms, then you'd be at $12,000. At this point, you have bought all the lights, all the air conditioners, three CO2 burners from Sentinel, the pots, the tables. You know what I mean? The propane tanks from Home Depot. You can buy all of them for the same price. Because if you figure if it's 200 bucks a light, nine lights is 1800 bucks. That's 12,000 versus LEDs, you now have $10,200 left over. If everything else costs $10,200, if you tried to do this with LEDs, it would cost you 22200 Yeah, it's not an option for me at the moment, that. Yeah, 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 and LEDs are great. But in the real world, motorcycles are great too. But you can't pick two kids up from school on them because they want to know where the first one is when you come back for the second one. So... Not everything works everywhere. And in your case, for all of the equipment that you need, buy the HID lights because people have been using them for 40 years and just killing it with those lights. I mean, a pound and a half is average. That's average because there's a lot of fucking failures. So if you're successful, you might, based on your strain, you might get two pounds per light plus CO2. I mean, you might be at six and a half. So... There's some wiggle room in there, but definitely it's worth it's worth um, not doing LEDs and doing HIDs with Ushio bulbs. Um, buy the supersized hoods, you know, like uh, Sunlight has those Dominator hoods. Yeah, I yeah. really don't care if you buy the six or the eight because, frankly, you're going to take the glass out of them. I don't care if you buy new or used because you're going to take the glass out of them. Like, you come to my store – I've got supersized hoods, you know, whether it be the Raptor or the Dominator or the Predator from BWGS. They're all the same hood. And once you take the glass out, dude, I've got them for 80 bucks at my store. Used hoods, supersized, no glass. Really? What are you, oh, like 200 bucks? Yeah, it's yeah, pricey. Yeah, shame shipping's a lot over here. <laughs> I bet. Uh, but that's not the issue. The issue is the customs. <laughs> That's a bit of <laughs> so, but you have those options, and so, you know, even eBay, Amazon, local hydro stores, however it is, you call around. Even if you just bought it new, 
And they got kits for 200 bucks with hoods on eBay. Right. So those super-sized hoods that you're on about, I, they are air-cooled. You say take the glass out, but I don't yeah. need to cool them. Well, if you have a sealed room, how are you going to cool them? The air con. The air conditioner. Right. Yeah. So if you have an air conditioner in the room, why would you have glass? The glass converts light to heat. And if oh, you right, watch okay. my videos, that glass, that glass approaches 200 degrees. Think, okay. about your, think about your car in the sun. When you touch the window on your car, it is hotter than the ambient air temperature. Yeah, don't you? Right, because the light waves get converted into heat. That's why the inside of your car is 140, but it's only 100 degrees outside, because you convert light into heat. And all the light that you convert into heat is not light that hits the plant. But more importantly, you can project that information onto the plant. Because people tell me, oh, my room is cool. I feel that's great. I turn the air conditioner on in my car. 70 degrees outside. I'm in Vegas, 110. So the plant, just like the glass, absorbs the light. And because the plant is mostly water, it stores the heat, the light as heat in the water. And if you know anything about the conversion of water into steam, you know that it's one joule per cc per degree until you want to break the bond. And then it's like 640 joules to convert 212 water into 212 steam, which is why steam is so much hotter than water. And it's the same temperature because they store that energy. And as the plant stores the energy and as the molecules start to move faster, bad things happen inside the plant. That's why the light can't be closer. That's why I tell you five feet because if you put it three feet away, you can cool the room, but you can't cool the plant. So in your case, lights will be up at the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'll have a couple of fans screwed to the walls, just like you see in that in that 15 plant picture that I put up. There's a couple of fans screwed to the walls because you must change the angle of the leaf to the light a little bit. You don't have to blow the leaf over. You don't have to be extreme about it, but you do have to move the air between the plants. Okay. Right. Um, now. Filtering of the air, um, charcoal filters and the, lot, and the like. Okay. What how, how important is getting rid of the smell? Is it mission critical? It's preferable. It's not mission critical. Okay. There's no one near the building, but it's, it's preferable. Okay. The difference between um, the best filter and pretty much most filters is – a hundred bucks, even the big one, one fifty. Fresh filter seems to be the best filter on the market for my customers. Okay. So you can buy lots of filters. Sunlight has Black Ops. Hydro Farm has Active there. They all have one. There's Vortex has a spectacular fan filter set up as well. Um, you can watch them in my videos, and you can see how the filter and fans match together. But in this case, you're going to want a big fan. And on top of the fan, you're going to put a 90 so it blows the air back into the garden because you're not venting. So you're going to want probably one big fan on one side, two big fans, one on each side, or two medium fans, one on each side, fan filter combos, sorry. So you're probably going to put at your level, you're going to require two in opposite corners. Okay. You want about fan, sorry, fans or filters here? Yes, because you put the fan on the filter. Um, the fans that you screw to the wall are like the oscillating fans. Yes. The fans okay. that you're going to put like, like the S-line from Vortex, you're probably going to want six of those, two for each room. You might just want one in veg, but at that point, you might put two in veg, too. So definitely you would start with five very large 10-inch fans and filters. And Vortex is great. 
Fresh makes a great filter. It seems to be the most popular. Um, Fresh doesn't make fans, but in your case, you're just going to plop the fan right on top of the filter and put a little 90 on top of the fan so it directs the air across the room so you're always circulating the air even with the big fans. And, again, you might find them used and cheaper because fans – we go through a lot of fans at the store, a lot of used fans, and rarely does a centrifugal fan ever die. What sort of size filters would you suggest I go for for these? Rooms? Oh, as big as possible. Okay. The difference between a medium filter and a big filter is probably 50 bucks. The difference between a big filter and a name brand big filter is probably 50 bucks. So for 100 bucks. In your world, you might as well spend the money. Okay. Um, I've read on and seen on some of your stuff that slow air is best for moving through filters. Yeah, that's adorable. Um, it's adorable when they have when you have a four or six hundred or a four six combo. But in your world, you got nine thousand watts. It's a different game for you. And when you look at when you look at my venting videos, I take a smoke machine and I show you how far down the smoke goes. In your case, you want the smoke to be sucked in all the way at the bottom of the filter all the time. You don't want like a little half-run filter. You have – I can smell an eighth in your pocket, and you're going to be growing upwards of 12 pounds at any one time. You figure six is almost done flowering, and the other three lights are halfway through. There's nine, ten pounds there. You have to buy real filters, and you'll have to buy real fans. And it, it circulates the same air over and over. It's not a one-and-done situation. I'm suggesting that you buy bigger stuff because I'm aware of your situation and the rooms are sealed and you're going to have to move the air and really the only thing that changes would be a $50 cheaper filter and maybe like a $50 cheaper fan. And it's just not worth doing, is it? Right. In this case, you just buy too much. In your world, you just buy a little more on the fans. At least you didn't buy the LEDs. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a couple sitting around, but they're um, yeah. I, I always get the doorstops. Call. Nice. I always get the calls from the guys who have already bought their equipment and it's not working, and it's because they're doing like tiny LEDs and DWCs. And LEDs are great. We're appropriate. They really do change the buzz. But if you had a three thousand watt HID flower with Ushio bulbs and supersized hoods, I would suggest a like a kind 600 that you skim across the top of all the buds because if the UVA and UVB really change the grow, then you would use real HID lights so you get the weight, and then you would add some UVA and UVB to that to help enhance it. But rarely do you get there when you use LEDs as the main lights, rarely. Yeah, I've, I've had a go. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the manufacturers call me because I post videos about LEDs, and I say the same thing. For most growers, an LED garden is a guaranteed failure. And they call me up and they tell me, oh, we've got growers, and I tell them, dude, make a video. Make, a, make your own show. Come, in, come on my show with your proof, and we'll sit down right in front of everybody, and we'll do this. And I haven't had one LED taker. Yeah, well, if I get anywhere near six pounds, I'll send you all my stuff for free and the postage. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, I've got the guys. Okay, so here's how it works. Guy comes into my store. Everything's failing. They buy a bunch of shit. They put it on the counter. I take their money. And then when I take their money, I look at them and I say, would you like to show me a picture of your garden and allow me to help? And then I say, oh, okay, and I look at a picture of their garden, and I've already taken their money. I've bagged up their shit. It's theirs. I've spent their money already. <laughs> and then they show me DWC, like these little contraption tents where the light's 10 inches away, and they got 200, and they're in a DW. There's several iterations of the same failure with LEDs. And so I go through, and I show them pictures, and I open up my book, and I explain why they can't ever finish. 
and one of two things happens. Either they get really mad. Sometimes they shake and cry in my store and they stop <laughs> off. Or they stop or they stop and listen. And they don't necessarily change the equipment, but after that, one of two things happens. Either they come back in 48 hours, big puppy dog eyes with a pocket full of money, and they bring me their equipment, and they trade it in and get the right equipment. Or they go to all the other hydro stores, and the other hydro stores tell them, oh, it's pH lockout. Oh, you got to have 6.1. Oh, you're at 6.1? Oh, it needs to be 6.2. Oh, you're at 6.2? Well, then it needs to be 6.1. So everybody tells them it's pH lockout, and then I usually see them in about 60 days where they're either selling me their equipment or they're buying the right equipment because you just can't get from here to there with the wrong equipment. Okay. <laughs> it's always the same thing. Yeah, well, I've made some mistakes in my time. Like That's, that's as much as I'll admit. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, I dropped a boat on the freeway. I've spent more money on less for sure. I've made the mistakes. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Going back to things like media then, I was anticipating just growing in soil or media to start with and then moving on to hydroponics. Um, but tell me <laughs> tell me what to do. <laughs> okay, the thing about hydro is whatever you do in flower, you have to duplicate and veg. Because you can't grow in soil and then go to hydro. You can't grow in aero and then go to hydro. You can't grow in hydro and then go to – so in terms of efficiency, I know people try to, like, root in a turbo cloner and then bury it in soil. But the reality is, even if you saved a week, I would just tell you, if you're in soil, start a week earlier. You don't save anything. Yeah. So in your case, you're going to – if you're on the floor – you're probably going to have a little bit longer veg, fewer plants that are a little bigger. If you put them on a table, you're probably going to have more plants because they're smaller because you have to put the bucket on the table instead of the bucket on the floor. Yeah. So it does put it a little closer, but when you look at when you look at that 15 plants per two lights, you can see he has like a 12 or 14 foot ceiling. If you have an eight foot ceiling, and you have a one-foot hood and a one-foot bucket, you have six feet left. If your plants have if your plants have 18-inch legs, you're going to have like a four-foot plant, um, four, five, six with the light, you'll finish two feet away. It's a tough thing, so you need more plants. Um, you spread the hood out, that's pretty good. If you put on a light mover, that helps too. You can also do hydro. That's not a bad idea. Um, there are a couple of ways to do hydro. Some people do rock wool. That's not hydro. That's just soil on a table because it holds the water between waterings. When you do hydro ton, those clay balls, it does not hold the water. So you have to water four times a day. In that rock wool stuff, and I'm not a fan of rock wool even a little bit. I hate Grodan. I hate the sound it makes when my fingers touch it. I hate oh, the way my horrible. fingers feel. Yeah. yeah. After I, I work touch with it, it, so it's disgusting. Yeah. And we sell a lot of it in my store. I'm just not a fan. However, I will say that it's a very clean media. And even though I'm not a fan, I would definitely consider using it if I was on tables like you might be. See, at this point, if you do buckets, you're not really buying tables. Buckets are cheaper. Four by eight tables or even four by four tables. That's probably going to add 150 bucks a table to your expense. And you may not need it in veg. Um, well, let's say you bought three four by four tables for each room. You technically, you would probably need five in veg because you're the plants, all the plants are not going to be doing the same thing. Some plants will be four weeks old. Some plants will be just starting. So you might grow in cubes. You could do a table. You know, you're going to have to move the plants into flower from veg. So, so if you were going to do it in veg, I would say that you would start in that one-and-a-half-inch tray. I think it has, like, 50, the slab of rock wool, 
that has like 50 of them in there. You would put that with like 50. Then you would put those cubes into the six-inch Hugos. The six-inch Hugos, then you would veg for a month, and you would move them into flour. If you're watering them from the bottom up like an ebb and flow, if you're watering them like that, then it doesn't really matter because you could water it twice a day. It doesn't matter how big they get because you could water it twice a day. So that's not a bad idea. You might, depending on how it works out, veg in a four and then put that on top of a six. You might veg in a six and put that on top of an eight. And I sent you a picture about that too. So you have a couple of options. It does get tall if you put a six on an eight. So you might have to do a top feed. But you might just be able to feed the bottom because the plants would be big enough at that point. The thing about the thing about Rockwell that's nice is you can run it through a ringer and it comes out super flat and dry and you can put a lot of Rockwell in a trash bag. Right, okay. So it has its ups, it has its downs. And you would suggest in this case the rock wool as opposed to some <laughs> yeah. I would suggest in this case that if you're going to do hydro that you're probably not going to do the clay balls because when you grow the plants, they root around the clay balls. And you're going to be buying a lot of clay balls. If you try to stay, salvage them out of the root, you're going to hate it and want to buy another bag. But you're not somewhere where I think you can get a bag. So you might consider at your level a pallet of that grow damn stuff because it's super convenient for you. And when I say I don't like it, they grow great plants. You can't tell grow down from soil, but soil you might have to reuse because you might not have a place to throw out. Oh, I've got unlimited space for that. Okay, so consider that you're going to have 23 gallons in flour. That's 60 gallons. So one bag of, of soil usually does about nine gallons. So you're going to have, what, eight bags, nine bags, um, no, eight bags, 72, like six bags to fill them up. So, I mean, you're going to have a lot of bags, and that's every month you're going to be throwing away six bags plus the stump of the plant that you cut down. And you can't thin it out and send it through a ringer like you can with rock wool. Space isn't an issue over here at the moment. So, um... But trash, but the trash, sending... Ten bags of sending six bags of trash out every month, and bringing six bags bags in every month for the next round might get old. Okay, that's that's all I'm suggesting is that it may be easier because you figure there's there's 48 Hugos in a box or 18 Big Mamas. That means you would need one box of Big Mamas for a flower. That that may be better for you than six bags of soil, and it might maybe could be delivered. I don't know. But in this particular case, if you did the soil, they'd be on the ground, probably a little bigger. If you did the if you did the rock wool, they'd be on a table, probably a little smaller. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. Which of then of course changes veg. You have to work keep working backwards. If they're a little smaller, you need a couple more and a shorter veg. If they're a little bigger, you need a few less and a longer veg. If I go with soil to start with, what sort of, um, if I'm growing hybrids, what sort of height or ha what length of veg would you suggest I go for here? With okay, the again, recommended? Uh, again, when I had said this earlier, what I had said was you're going to have a four-week root and a four-week veg, and you're going to put 10, 20, 10, you're going to put 20 into flower, you're going to veg in a one, transplant into a three. So I've already laid that one out. Now, if your hybrid grows fast, you're going to do a three-week root and a three-week veg. So you're at six weeks instead of eight. And if your hybrid grows slow, you might have a four-week root and a five-week veg. So I, I can only get you so close unless you know how long. Uh, I can't answer that for you. Yeah, yeah, okay. You would have to already know that. I can give you the idea. I can give you the relationship. I can, you know, spread it out for you like that. But 
the very, very fine details I can't know without without the details. Okay. Well, I can always come back. I've got your phone number now, so. Right. Um, okay. Well, this has been a huge, well, it's been a massive help, to be honest. Massive help. Just with this. Yeah, right. Stuff. My God, I've learned so much. Um, blimey, what am I missing at the moment? What have I not got that you can see? Experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> no, there's nothing to do now, but allow me to make the video, listen to the video, get an idea for the rotation, build the room and do it. Because now yeah. you have a plan laid out. And when you watch your video, the plan will be a little more laid out visually for you. I'll take the time and lay it out like that for you. But, but yeah, now, now, now the time, you know, put up or shut up. Yeah, well, the rooms are just finishing being built at the moment, so um, I'm already quite a way in. Perfect. You'll just have to kill everybody so they never know where your grow is. Perfect. Like I said, a fun guy that was willing to listen, right? And that's really what it takes to grow cannabis. This really has to be about what the plant wants, not what you want. Because if you try to stuff your plants into a space they won't grow, they won't grow. And if you try to grow plants under a light where they're not going to grow, they're not going to grow. And I understand how much you spent and how long you have invested in this. And if you have any questions, you can always sign up for my hotline too. It's $49 an hour and I'll straighten out your garden. I'm the Grow Boss. Thanks for listening.